time to clean this up. Gonna clean up the surfaces so I can get the belly pan on here. Going to do a test fit here. Just so I can see if there's any areas that are gonna be kind of a problem. That are gonna have a little bit more gap that might need a little bit more caulk on them. Let's see here. That seems pretty good. A little bit more on the base here. But I mean, not much. Not much. No, that's a that's a beautiful fitting. So pull this out of here. I wiped down the edges of that one, the uh, the mating surfaces with uh, my degreaser already. All right, let's give this a shot. See how big of a mess we can make. I'm going to put a decent V down here, but I'm not going to get ridiculous. Because I don't need to. There we go. That should be more than enough. I'm going to let that tack up a little bit. Actually, it says here, assemble immediately while still wet. Let dry for one hour, then tighten the torque specs. So you want to finger tighten everything and then tighten the torque specs after an hour. All right. All right. You really don't want to move it when you're on there. You just want to drop it into place. I don't want to push really hard. Okay, let me grab my two bolts. Okay. It says I need to leave that sit for an hour now and then tighten then torque it down. It has been an hour. I'm going to put this back together and tighten these down. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on here. Just being real careful to get it just on the bolt. Just on the tip here. All right, got the bolts in, tightened down. It squished a little extra out around the edges here. Been working on cleaning it up a little bit and then realized I should be filming. I'm gonna go ahead in a couple spots where I can see air. I don't think there's actually a problem with the seal, but I wanna seal it from the outside here just to make sure. Um, and then I'll let that dry another hour. Um, I can actually start working on the uh, on the intake manifold uh, while that's drying, and uh, we'll see how far we can get. Uh, anyway, I'm going to look and see what else I need to paint, and we'll get that done real quick. But this uh, valley pan is in. I suggest going to Fast Monty's garage and watch his tutorial on taping this off. Uh, don't do it the way I did it. Trust me. That was, that was way too hard. Um, I did get the right amount of, of caulking in here, but as far as this upper edge, um, he had a really good way of doing it, and uh, I did not do it that way, and I regret it now. I've been doing some test fitting on my gaskets, 
and I had to trim just a little bit off the bottom of this part because it kind of dips down. So I trimmed a little bit off of that and then I marked over here on the manifold. This whole end sticks out and doesn't do anything um, because they're, they're mirror images so the other end does. You can put your bolts in here if you're unsure. Okay. And that trace that I made, right on the money. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that one. I am gonna be putting a crossover blocking plate in here. It actually comes with a special Special gasket for it. Uh, I'm gonna trust Edelbrock and try it. If that ends up failing, I can always get a piece of stainless steel plate and put in there. Um, but I wanna try out their gasket first and see how that works. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and trim, trim that across there as well, just so it, everything looks nice and neat. All right, she's all trimmed up. That should work pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side now. On this end, because they have the outlet for the heater core, I went ahead and just trimmed this edge because I know it's going to be short anyway. Otherwise, it was the gasket was kind of sitting up. So I've got this trim now, so it should sit on here good. I'm now I'm going to set the uh, manifold back on there. Be sure you put your PCV gasket in there by the way before you put your intake on It'd be really hard to get that thing down in there if you forget all right she's lined up okay all right now it's gonna draw oh I came really close to cutting that short didn't I Ooh. be a little more careful than I was I mean, seriously, I'm like half of it. I don't even have to cut. That's how close I got. That was close to messing that up. The Edelbrock kit comes with both uh, seals. So you got one that you can block off the crossover or one that you can use the crossover. So very convenient. I trimmed mine down. I'm gonna use the block. Again, if that blows out or wears out, I'll I can throw a piece of stainless in there. I don't foresee a, a huge problem with it. This piece is made out of a different material. Uh, very much reinforced. Um, it actually has, looks like it has a couple layers of metal in it. So, should be good. I'm gonna go, I gotta go find my um, PCV uh, rubber insert for this. Um, so I don't forget that because it's a lot harder to get that in there once everything's together. So let me go grab that and then uh, then we'll come back. We'll get this intake on here. All right. Do not forget the rubber grommet that goes on the front for the water pump. The water pump connection. will not seal very well without that. All right, got this set on here. Get all the bolts started so you know your uh, gaskets are in the right place. They were right when I started them, but you never know. It can slip. All right, got this on here. Got to bolt it down. Sorry, I didn't film that. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, just got the gaskets in. Got her done. She's looking really nice. Um, I've got to get my carburetor, my linkage, figure that out. Uh, my fuel line. I got to get my fuel line routed up through here somehow. So I'm gonna have to work on that. That'll be another project. 
Um, not sure what I'm going to tackle first, um, but uh, I'll find something else and we'll we'll keep on going. All right, who else caught it that I forgot the draw bolt on this? So I had to loosen all these up, draw it down. It won't affect anything. There's no sealant or nothing on this intake manifold. It's just the just the gasket. Um, I only put a little bit on there just to kind of keep it in place, but it was nothing to seal. It's just the intake manifold. So it doesn't require the, if all your surfaces are clean and flat, this should pull down no problem. So I'm gonna go around, get these all these tightened, get them torqued, and then we'll be good. Originally had a press on line on here with a, with a hose clamp. I'm gonna change that out to a banjo fitting. Um, and we're gonna hook up to the uh, fuel pump. I got this Edelbrock fuel line kit 81343. Comes with this uh, fuel line fitting. And then it has two metal washers. One goes against the carburetor. One goes against here. So you basically one on each side of that fitting. All right, so I'm not sure why this went on there so hard the first time. Um, I was able to get it now after I played with it a little bit. Um, just like the first couple of threads, maybe were messed up from that other fitting I had on there. Maybe I stretched them a little bit. I didn't even have, I mean, I'm pretty sure that fitting was on there from the factory when I got it. I hadn't even touched it, so, um, hmm, really weird. Anyway, I got this to go on here, you know, nice now, like it should. Okay, I'm not sure this is going to fit quite like I wanted it to. Because I have this fuel filter that's supposed to go here. Well, that ain't going to fit. I didn't tighten this yet. But that's not going to fit. I mean, I can get the, the line on here and run that over. So I guess maybe I'll put this over here. But this is supposed to screw right into this and saves me a, saves me an extra connection, I guess, but or not. Um, hmm. Well, I guess that's just how these Edelbrock intakes are. I suppose if I had the spacer on here, I could get a spacer for this. A lot of people run a spacer on these because of the, the, heat, the heat soak. Um, let me look into that because that would not be that much higher. What is that, about maybe an inch? Yeah, my thumb's an inch here. Center of my thumb to the center of that. Yeah, not even an inch riser would get me up plenty high. Let me look into that because I was warning about this carburetor being on the low side, and I haven't done my uh, if I haven't done my throttle linkage yet. So maybe I'll look at putting a spacer under here, get that carburetor up a little bit, minimize the heat soak, and then this filter would fit better than two. So I am taking my intake off. I cannot find that half inch socket. I did drop a bolt in one of the intake runners the one day and fished it out. And it's been bothering me that maybe when I dropped that bolt, maybe that was when I lost my socket also. So rather than take the chance of blowing up an engine, I'm gonna take the intake off of here. I know I didn't drop it when I was doing the valley pan because that takes the half inch socket and I know I had used it on there. But it was shortly after that, that 
needed the half inch socket for something else after I had put this intake on, and I didn't have it. So it's possible when I dropped that bolt that I missed that I also dropped the socket. So a little insurance, I don't have a camera to shove down in here. This is not on with any sealant. The gasket is to the heads, but I didn't put any sealant from the gasket to the intake. So this should just lift right off with no issues. I just have to have a spot to put it. So this should come off. Boy, those intake runners are long. I could see how I could drop something down in there. So I'm gonna check the water passages. Might not hurt to throw a magnet down in there. Oh no, I could see all the way to the valves. I just know I'm gonna sleep a lot better knowing that I looked down in here. Okay, so there is nothing there. Again, that didn't take really any time at all. Um, just peace of mind knowing that it's not in here. Because that would be an absolute disaster. If you had a, something like a socket like that. It's a half inch socket with my almost half inch lift. At some point or another she's going to get jammed under a, into a valve or something, you know. So, not in there. I do not know where my half inch socket went, but I do know it's not on the top end of my motor. All right, let me go ahead and get this intake back on here. One of the things to remember on a Pontiac, you've got this bolt for the crossover, or for the water jacket. Be sure you get that bolt on there first and tighten down, because that's what makes your seal right in here. That's what makes your seal from your water pump. Otherwise, you have a very, very bad day. All right, I'll get all that put back together. Um, but I just wanted to show you that sometimes you got to take stuff apart to make sure you got it right. I was working on that fuel line yesterday. I they pretty much determined I'm going to put a riser on here. It'll help avoid heat soak. It'll get my fuel line work right where I want it because it'll raise this up an inch and get me just above the runner here. Then I can run my fuel line down. So um, I think that's going to be the video for this week. I, 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 I I didn't get a lot done. Been working on some other stuff around the house. Just stuff that's got to get done. Um, appreciate everybody that's liking and subscribing. Uh, please keep following along. I'm not the fastest at this, but uh, um, I'm doing my best to get it done correctly. And like I say, just taking this apart to make sure that I hadn't dropped something down in there. Sometimes you got to do it. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. See you in the next video.